Hi, I'm Dr. Mirna. Welcome to our first lesson in this Introduction to Geography course in which you and I were going to be discovering the word together. In this lesson, we're going to learn what is geography and some of the general concepts which always be using throughout the course. Many people associate the word geography simply with knowing where things are, whether they be countries such as Myanmar or Uruguay, cities such as Lyon, Kyoto, or deposits of natural resources such as petroleum, iron ore, etc. Some people pride themselves on knowing which river are the longest, which mountains are the tallest, and which deserts are the largest. Such factual knowledge about the world has value, permitting us to place current events in their proper spatial setting. When we hear of an earthquake in Turkey or an assault in Shishnia, we at least can know where they occurred. But knowing why they occurred in those places, however, is more important. Geography is much more than place names and locations. So what is geography? Well, geography is the study of the distribution, how things are arranged, and the interaction of the physical and the human features of the Earth. The word geography comes from two Greek words, geo and graphia. Geo means earth and graphia means to write or to draw or in other words to describe. So put together, geography literally is the describing of the word, and that's what we're going to do in this course. So how this is differed from history? Historians and geographers look at the word in a different way. Historians tell a story of the earth and its people in terms of time, dates are important in history, Geographers, however, tell a story of the Earth and its people in terms of space or spatial relationships. Geographers look at um, what happened based on the spatial relationships between people and the environment. Now, within geography, there are two uh, main branches or two major branches, which is physical geography and human geography. Physical geography, it looks at the physical characteristics of the earth. This includes the creation of mountains, volcanoes, and other landforms. It also looks at weather and climate, which impacts the type of vegetation and animals around the world or what we call biomes. The biomes of the world are tropical rainforest, temperate forest, desert, tundra, taiga, grassland, savanna. There are sub-branches in physical geography, mainly four <coughs> sub-branches. The first one is geomorphology. So geomorphology deals with the changing landforms or deal, deals with the actual landforms. Landforms like mountain, hills, plain, plateau. Mountain has a summit, a sharp summit. It looks like a pyramid. Hill doesn't have a sharp summit. Uh, what do you mean by hill range? Hill range means a continuous hills. Plain is a flat ground, plateau is an elevated plain or elevated flatland. So geomor geomorphology uh, particularly deals with landforms. If we have a desert, how the conditions will prevail, or tundra region, very cold region, how the conditions will prevail. So this is studied by the topic geomorphology. Moving on to the next sub-branch in physical geography, climatology. 
So as the name says, it deals with climate of any region. Example, if a place is near the equator, the temperature will be high. And if a place is in the poles, the temperature will be low. So climatology will study the climate of different regions tropical region near the equator, temperate region in the middle altitude, tundra region in the poles. So what is the difference between weather and climate? Are they both the same? Of course, no. Weather is the day-to-day -day phenomenon. For example, today is hot or today is cold. Today is sunny. Today is rainy but climate is the average weather phenomenon. If it's daily hot, we say it's a tropical climate. Or if it's daily cold, we say it's a temperate climate. Or if it's daily very cold, we say it's a tundra climate. So the climate phenomenon is studied by the topic climatology, a subbranch of physical geography. Moving on to the next sub-branches of physical geography, hydrology. As the name says, hydro, hydro means water. It deals with the water forms, how the rivers flow, how the lakes function, how the seas or the oceans are formed, how much water do we have on Earth? We have 79% of water. That means we have only 29% of land. And from 79% of water, there is 97.3 salt water and the rest 2.7 fresh water. So the water forms or the water bodies are studied by the topic hydrology. Moving on to the next topic, soil geomorphology, sorry, soil geography. So as the name says, it studies the soil of different region. Some area will be having alluvial soil. Some area will be having sand soil. Some area will be having laterite soil. It discusses soil topics and the study of soil is called pedology especially studies the soil nature of different regions. Moving on to the next branch of geography, human geography. Human geography looks at the human characteristics of the Earth's people. Human characteristics include culture, religion, government, economics, and much more. Human characteristics define everything mankind is and what mankind does. Now, what is really powerful in geography is when geographers look at the interaction between both physical characteristics and human characteristics. For example, geographers look at how rivers, mountain and deserts have impact where people live how they have learned their languages, what type of government they have, and even the culture and customs they have. This is where we're going to spend a lot of time in these lessons. In human geography, we have mostly five sub-branches. The first one is social or cultural geography. So as the name says, it deals with culture cultural or social event of the society, how the society behaves, how the society Greece behaves, how the society China behaves, how the society India behaves, what are the different cultures, what is the culture of America, what is the culture of China. So they are all studied by the topic social or cultural geography. The other sub-branch of a human geography is population and settlement geography, rural and urban. 
as the name says, it deals with population numbers. Like what is the population of that country? What is the sex ratio of this country? It means the ratio of males to females in a population. What is the natal or mortality rate of this country? What is the infant mortality rate of this country? What is the population density of the area? How people are settling, whether they are settling in rural area, whether uh, they are settling in urban areas, these questions are answered by the topic population and settlement geography. We will move on to the next topic of geography, economic geography. So it deals with the economic activities of different people, whether they are into agriculture, whether they are into industries, whether they are into services or tourism, whether they are into formal sector, whether they are into informal sector. So economic activities are especially studied by the economic geography. Moving on to the next topic of human geography, historic geography. It captures the historic events of a place. Earlier, which people have ruled in this area. Now, which people are, are ruling in this area or in this country. It deals with the historic events of a place. We will move to the last topic of human geography. That is political, political geography. So how political events take place at different places how they will determine the actual geography of a place. For example, if I want to build a dam, it depends on the different factors of that political event taking place of that actual region. So it will determine the geography of that place. So these are the five sub-branches of human geography. So geographers, to study these elements of the world, they use several different tools like charts, maps, the GIS, and something known as five themes of geography. The five themes of geography, location, place, region, movement, human environment interaction. In this lesson, they also provide a useful way to introduce some of uh, the basic concepts of geography. The first theme is location, which asks, where is it? How do we know where somewhere is on the earth? Now, geographers can describe location as either absolute or relative location. An absolute location tells exactly where something is using coordinate of latitude and longitude. Now, longitude and latitude are imaginary lines ring across the, the globe to tell how far either north and south you are or east and west you are in the globe. The first set of lines are latitude. The word latitude comes from the Latin word latus, which means breadth. So latitudes are imaginary lines running horizontal across the globe. Well, the most important line of latitude is the equator, which runs through the middle of the earth and divides the earth into a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. Now, if you are in the north of the equator, you are in the northern hemisphere. And if you are in the south of the equator, you are in the southern hemisphere. Now, how far you are from the equator is measured in degrees. From the equator, which is as uh, at zero degree till the North Pole at 90 degrees north and till the South Pole at 90 degrees south. Now, if you are at 45 degrees north latitude, you're halfway between the equator 
and the North Pole. And if you're at 45 degrees south latitude, you're halfway between the equator and the south pole. So latitude tells us how far north and south you are from the equator. Longitude tells us how far east and west you are uh, of something known as prime meridian, which runs right through Greenwich in England. The prime meridian, which, has, which is at uh, zero degree longitude, divides the Earth into an eastern hemisphere and a western hemisphere. Now, longitude is measured by degree, starting at the prime meridian at zero degrees, by either going east to the 180 degrees or west to the 180 degrees to the other side of the world at the international date line. The time in the world is actually based on longitude, each time zone is about 15 degrees longitude. But latitude and longitude together are specially used in coordinates. So coordinates are kind of address where latitude is listed first and then longitude because location is between a line of latitude and a line of longitude. Latitude and longitude are divided into minutes and minutes into seconds. Here is a, an example of coordinates. This tells us that this location is at 30 degree, 39 minutes, 8.2 second north the equator, 96 degree, 20 minutes, 48.5 second west longitude. This is the absolute location. The other type of location is relative location, which doesn't use coordinate, but describe the location by where it is in relation to another location. For example, Mexico is south of Texas. New York is on the east coast of the United States and France is about 4,900 miles from Texas. So relative location describes one place in relation from another place. Place. It's easier to use a relative location when we describe a location. Now in geography, in relative uh, location, we we'll always use directions such as north, south, east and west. Usually north is at the top of the map, south is at the bottom of the map, west to the left of the map and east to the right of the map. Most maps have compass rows to verify which way the map is oriented. Now the, the next theme of geography is place. Place answer the question of what is it like there? Geographers look at physical and human characteristics of a place. When we talk about the physical characteristics of a place, we talk about climate, weather, mountain, desert, what has a vegetation. And when we talk about the human characteristics of a place, we will discuss who lives there, uh, what language they speak, what are their customs, what type of government they have. With both physical and human characteristics, we use the theme of geography place. Then there is region. Region asks how is this area different or similar from another area. There are three types of uh, region, formal region, functional region, and perceptual region. Formal region is defined as a connected area that has one of more measurable characteristics. Example, the desert is a formal region because within the desert, it shares all the same types of characteristics. 
the formal region has an official boundary has been drawn. Uh, so country state are formal region. Functional region, when the region is defined by a focal point and the areas are connected to it. So when the area is related to a central hub or a focal point. When I say the water fountain isn't functioning, you know that is not working. Likewise, if I say my computer is finally functioning, you know now that it is working. Functional means work. So, a map shows how things work is a functional region. When you see a map, it shows how a subway works that is a functional region. So, if a map shows trade business and transportation, all things are work, we're talking about functional region. Then there are perceptual region. The word perceptual comes from the word perceive, which means to see. A perceptual region is a region that is dependent of how someone see the location. It's determined by how a person wants to see a place or what story they want to tell. Then there is movement. The theme of movement asks how do goods, people, and ideas move from one location to another. So migration, trade, and cultural diffusion are part of the theme of movement. Geographers study how relations, languages, and costumes are spread uh, spread around the world, which is known as cultural diffusion. They also study how cultures separate from each other, which is known as cultural diversion, and how cultures come together, which is known as culture conversions. And looking at movement, geographers will be looking how distances affect the human experience. Last, we have human environment interaction. In this theme of geography, we ask what people shape and have been shaped by the environment. How do they relate to the physical world? Human environment interaction includes the facts of pollution and the overuse of resources it also includes how people have made intentional changes to their environment, such as building dams, irrigation for agriculture, and the building of tunnel to support the transportation. So these are the five themes of geography, but geographers do not only use one theme of geography at the time, rather they use several themes, if not all of them, to be on the study of a country or an area in the earth. We will be using these themes of geography and other tools as we travel around the world in this course. I'm so excited to be able to share the world with you and I hope you are too. So until the next lesson, keep on learning. Thank you.